Hi everyone, Dusty from Discovery Lab in Tulsa, Oklahoma here for Discover at Home, a series of activities and experiments that you can perform at home with a parent or caregiver. Our challenge for you guys today is our Great Flood Barriers, where we will learn about civil engineering and earth sciences. Some of you may be wondering, what's a flood? A flood is a weather event where we have a huge amount of water falling in a specific area over a short period of time. This could be caused by a lot of different things. For instance, we could have snow melt coming down from a mountain. We could have a series of rainy days that happen over a shorter span of time. We could even have severe weather like a tornado or a hurricane or even a flash flood. Now, a flash flood is when we have a huge amount of rain that gets dropped in a very, very short period of time. What happens when we have flooding is that the ground is unable to absorb and waterways are not able to carry the water all the way down. So there's too much water for the earth to deal with. That causes the waterways to overflow their boundaries. For instance, rivers get too wide, lakes get too big, and unfortunately, sometimes that can damage buildings. Here in Tulsa, we have to deal with a lot of flash floods, and that's caused by our topography and our climate. Topography would be the lay of the land, the way that the hills and waterways connect together. Climate would be our general weather over the seasons. For instance, we know that we're probably gonna have storms in the spring, it's probably gonna be warm in the summer, and we might get snow in the winter. That's what our climate is. The supplies you'll need in order to do this challenge are some blocks and stand in for your buildings. I'm gonna use wooden blocks, but feel free to use plastic or what else you have. You're also gonna need some earth. I've got some sand right here. You can substitute rice. You can go out in your backyard. You can just dig some dirt up. Whatever you got will be okay. You'll also need a container. This right here is just an old recyclable, but you could use a casserole dish. You could use a plastic tub, whatever you got around. You'll also need something to make your barriers to help stop the flooding. You could use toothpicks, popsicle sticks. You could go out and you can get rocks out of your yard. That's what I'm gonna use, is I'm gonna use some rocks to make my barriers. You'll also need some water and a sponge or a way of dropping your water on your earth. You could use a squirt bottle, you could use a rag that you could drop in and then squeeze it out. Whatever you got work fine. Let's get started. The first step you're going to need to do is you're going to need to fill your container about a third full with whatever your earth is going to be. So I'm going to take my sand and I'm going to pour it in my container. going to be enough for me. Now you're going to want to pack it to one side. So I'm going to take my hand and scoop it up. So I kind of mount it up on one side and leave a little valley on the other side. This is going to be the topography of my land. I've got a bottom where a river would be and then I've got this slope leading up. Now I need to set my buildings in. I'm going to grab my blocks and I'm going to set them securely in my earth. All right, so if I was to take and just pour water down here, what do you think would happen to my buildings? They probably wouldn't fare too well. As the water rushed in, it would wash away a lot of my sand and my buildings would topple over. So I need to protect them. Time to build my barrier. I'm going to take some rocks and I'm going to set them between the waterway, where the water would flow, and my buildings. I'm going to try and create a good solid line of rock that I think will protect them. I'm trying to get tall rocks because I think that's going to be a good idea. What do you think? Is taller going to be better or wider going to be better? We're going to find out. And that right there, I think I've got a pretty decent barrier there. So now it's time to simulate some rainfall. So I'm going to grab my sponge and my water. I'm going to dip my sponge in the water and then I'm going to start raining it down. Now, you could do something like this outside. If you had a kiddie pool or a really big tub, you could use your garden hose, or you could set it outside in the real rain to see what happens. If you have a spray bottle, you could spray some rain down on. We can see that I'm starting to get a lot of saturation. My sand absorbs some of the water, but now I'm getting to the point where my sand can't absorb any more. And as I rain down, I see the sand starts to move. Uh-oh. And the more and more I rain down, the more and more my river fills up. 
Let's see now. Oh, I'm almost out of water. And, well, there we go. I can see that my sand has moved quite a bit. However, my barrier has stayed still and my buildings have survived. What do you think would happen if we had an even bigger rainstorm and I had twice as much water? Do you think it'd still survive? What would happen if we had a huge flash flood and we got four times as much? Oof. So this is why civil engineers have to think about what's going to happen to all these buildings whenever we have weather like flooding and rain happen. So now I've got even more water, so that way I can simulate what's going to happen if we don't just have one rainy day, but we have several rainy days in a row. So again, I'm going to grab my water and I'm going to start raining down all over my buildings, all over, uh-oh, I can see some of my rocks and my barrier are starting to move. Ooh, that's not going to bode well for everything else if my barrier gets knocked out. And you can see that the water is rising all the way up to the level of my buildings. So this is what happens as that river overflows its bounds. It can rise up to where we live and all the buildings inside the city and the town. Oh man, uh-oh, I can see some of my buildings are starting to shift. Oh, we can see that this building didn't survive three straight days of heavy rainfall. We can see that there is water all the way up to the edges of our buildings and my barrier is almost completely underwater. So it held up to one day it shipped a little in two days, but three days was way too much for it. So as an engineer, I would need to rethink my ideas and go back and try and make this building even stronger or this barrier even taller and better at preventing the water from knocking over my buildings. So now you guys have seen how my building stood up and my barrier stood up. I want to know about yours. How did your barriers protect your buildings? What did you use to make your barrier? How did you make certain it was strong enough to keep all these buildings standing up tall? How would you change it next time to make it even stronger in case we had four or five days of flooding? So our challenge to you guys is to create your own city and flood barriers. You can do it any scale you like. You can do it small, medium, big, extra large, whatever. Whatever you do though, make sure you submit it to us on social media and tell us a little bit about how it turned out. I'm excited to see how creative you guys are going to be. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all next time.